<clears throat> so I started doing some stupid things. Might be punished for it. But I hope I won't be punished so easily. I still control the position. Sometimes it might be a strategy like, yeah, getting absolutely losing position and then just, yeah, playing. Just keep playing as if there had been just a normal position. And your opponent start thinking not about what is going on on the board, but something like, why does he still play? Huh? Why? And so on. So he loses concentration and then starts making blunders or something. Okay, knight g5, bishop g5, queen g5, queen g5, bishop g5, rook d2, bishop d2 is a kai. Uh, the opposite order of moves should be also kai. So knight g5, rook d2, bishop d2, I still control everything. Now bishop e5 at some point, then queen h4. So let's take. An analysis, please show why not bishop g5. Okay, no problems. We'll see that. So now I get extra rook because rook f8 is trapped. All right, so let's have a look at that. That was a strange line. So knight f6, kind of yeah, strange move. But it feels like it's possible because after 95, 94, first I thought that there will be very simple rook e1 refutation, but then I noticed this queen d4 and probably that is exactly where I made a mistake because here I have a follow-up in the form of queen f3 simply attacking f7 and the knight on e4 and it doesn't feel like black has a defense normal defense I mean so if queen e5 then rook takes e4 and that's it game over and if uh, let's say f5 move well, it's very hard to believe it's playable, I mean, but maybe it is, maybe Black, st Black is still here, Black is still alive, yeah, very strange, very strange position, but okay, uh, I just play Queen to E2, uh, Bishop F5, so most likely G4 was possible here, as well as uh, anything else, so like attacking the Bishop. And then if bishop goes to g6, I just take and then take on e4. Everything can be here. I just played d3 because I thought, okay, knight goes away and so on. But uh, then I realized that queen e7 is okay. More or less okay, of course. Because now if I take on e4, then queen takes on e5 and my pawn e4 is pinned. That's the idea. Yeah. And if uh, I play rook e1, then bishop goes away. If I play f4, then everything is possible including queen c well queen c5 check is not it's not a good idea but queen e4 is absolutely playable there yeah so queen e7 maybe queen d4 was the last normal way of playing this in my opinion because after queen e7 i think if i want to achieve something i have to take on c6 bc6 d takes c4 so i'm trying to play against this uh pawns on a queen side so I still have to be better because I have better development and better pawn structure, but it was still playable. So bishop d6 was just, yeah, losing the minor piece. And there are, yeah, just a lot of different ways to, to get to uh, the winning position. After f5, so there was a suggestion of playing bishop g5, but uh, I wasn't sure about bishop takes f3. But maybe I was wrong. Yeah, after rook already on d2. Uh, it's possible just to take here and after bishop takes e2, just bishop takes d8. Yeah, absolutely winning position. You were absolutely right. So bishop g5 was kind of winning move. Yeah, but I was already kind of in a state of uh, lost concentration. 
so uh, I didn't calculate much because position is winning uh, yeah just every way you want any way you want that's probably a mistake this is by the way the typical mistake over the board you just uh, stop thinking critically and you can be punished for it but anyways okay let's go let's go let's go Artur Navarovsky says, thank you for game. Was it what that you playing this right now? My goodness, Artur, you can do this much better. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Who's here? It's time to play Chronic Student, I think. Uh, but can you please uh, actually... Uh, make one more challenge not three minutes because three minutes is just too much I mean not uh, the opposite meaning I mean it's not very good for playing three minutes against you because you play very good very decent chess so prior to playing you I will play Miktal okay I'll play Miktal yeah Mick, come on. <clears throat> e4, d4, c4, f4, g3. There are a lot of possible moves. Okay. We'll play some classics. Play some classics today. Tonight. For somebody, it could be the day, of course. Castles and the main, main line of Nimzo Indian. Here I usually play d6 and try to prepare e5. Just like that. And now I usually play this to stop the pawn on c4, which means that white is prevented from grabbing the space with the help of c5. Bishop on e2 remains more or less passive. And, well, in general, I want to put my pawns on dark squares. That's the point. For example, like this. Bishop b2, bishop b7. Rook d1, and there is a thread of just taking on e5. So where to put my queen? I think to c7 is better. Just targeting h2. At some point, might be good. Okay, knight e2. My pawn e5 is no longer hanging, so maybe it's a good moment to regroup my pieces a bit. So knight f8. I want to put my knight on g6. Bishop f3 is an interesting move, by the way, so it's very tempting for me to play e4 now. But um, after e4, I actually make bishop b2 very active so it will be just a double-edged decision bishop takes f3 on the other hand uh, gives my opponent a chance to exert some annoying pressure on light squares especially d5 long term but i still believe that e4 in this position will be not that cool so i will just keep doing what i wanted so i put my knight on g6 and then we will see. Uh, 
G3. Well, this Wiggins light square is a lot. This Wiggins light square is a lot. This might be very good for me. But let's start with rook to d8. I'm not sure if I need this rook on the d file, honestly. Absolutely not sure. But why not? I think rook d8 is just a normal follow up here. I have some tactical threats. After g3, well, bishop on f3 no longer feels very safe. Now it's protected, of course. What about just taking it right now? Looks very good, isn't it? So Queen C6 is very tempting now. As well as H5 or something. Let's start with this. So now we have to fight for light squares first and foremost. So let's do it. Let's attack. Now we shouldn't forget about d3 squares, so at some point it could be very tempting to occupy it. But at the moment I can't see a possibility to do this. As I said before, I want to avoid playing e5, e4 making this bishop be too extremely active, so. I want to try avoiding this. Oh, f4. Now this becomes very interesting, so. First of all, e takes f4, looks very good. e takes f4, then rook e2. My god, this looks kind of decisive. Let's take it, but it's also double-edged a bit. Let's put the rook here. I can't stand doing it. There should be something, right? So rook f2. No, rook d2. Rook d2, rook d2. Rook e1, check. Rook f1. Takes f1, king f1, queen h1, check. King goes to e2. Not clear. Hmm, okay. Yeah. I felt there is something, but didn't see this immediately. Had something else in mind. And I had some problems with timing, but I have extra queens, so I have to win this, right? Yeah, okay. Very interesting game, but uh, g3 was a serious mistake. That's for sure. So let's have a look at this quickly. Uh, g3 just not in the spirit of this position. So what white has to do here is uh, actually to uh, probably take on b7 uh, and then to play queen c2, knight b1, knight c3. That is a typical plan. So maybe even avoid him playing bishop to f3. So that is the plan. So queen c2 in this pawn structure. And then knight goes through uh, b1 to c3. And white tries to occupy d5 square. Uh, if necessary, it is also possible just to play f3 and e4 at some point. And long term, white should be better here. That's the idea. g3 just weakens a lot. And now black is definitely good. That's my opinion. All right, let's go further. Uh, so Kramnik student is here 
let's play where is the five minutes yeah we have we have yeah five minutes here we go all right so again this scotch let's play this This time I will try to avoid a5 move, so let's play this immediately. Let's castle. And attack e5. So now there will be an endgame with the extra pawn for black most likely. But there will be definitely some counterplay, I guess, for white. It's a typical thing here. Because I have a bad bishop here on a6 at the moment. But I do hope it's just a temporal, temporal issue. So let's start with the rookie two move or something. Didn't know is it a good idea because of ninety four there. Maybe bishop b four deserves attention here, just for now. I guess to f three. Rook goes to you know e two or e eight. Yeah, there are a lot of things to calculate in such a position usually. There is also a very solid way just going away with the rook. So let's do it. And f6. A bit passive, I know. At the same time, quite solid. So now bishop b4 wins me a temple. Of course, I think it's not very important to win temple here. But still pleasant. Okay, now to do what? To play d5, I think. This makes sense. To get rid of this prison for my minor pieces mainly. <clears throat> All right, let's go away. From the sea asks this opening was the exchange right? No, there was scotch. Yeah, this looks fine now. I have extra pawn and looks like good chances. To convert it. <laughs> Probably the most solid defense of the d5. Okay.
Now the plan is needed, how to convert it. First of all, I'd like to improve the position of my bishop. So let's go here. Now d5 is hanging, so king has to go away from the c-file. Let's stop this and grab b4 square for the bishop. b3 also became weak. So this is additional object of attack for me, so for d1, bishop c2 then. It's quite hard to find the good country play for white here because feels like black controls everything with his pawns and pieces. Knight goes to b1. All right. So why not bishop b4? Bishop d4. Well, I guess this simplification should be okay. The knight is hitting now. And I can simply go to get this pawn, probably. Should I do this right now or not? Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Now I just take on c3. This should be winning. Very interesting. Four bishops attacking each other at the same time, right? There is an interesting question. How do you decide to play solid? I get that you're uh, playing a defense, but while you had no problems, your pieces seem to be in awkward squares. Is there a generic plan or concept? Well, so it's a natural thing for this concrete variation. So it feels like pieces are actually on awkward squares, but there is usually a potential of uh, making them active. Thanks for the game, uh, Kramnik student, actually. Now we have both this uh, homework for our next encounter, hopefully uh, next Friday on Chess24. So, yeah, I have no idea how to improve this with white, to be honest. It will be better for you to investigate it yourself. After knight d2 and bishop a6, the only thing that I think here, uh, b3 is good. Just preparing bishop b2 and the quick castling, uh, followed by queen e4 and so on. So there are a lot of different orders of moves in this variation. It's a very complicated system for both sides to play. Um, and um, yeah, uh, positional explanation is also quite vague here. So um, black tries usually to do what? To come up with quick development then at counterattack against c4, e5, and so on. So, at very first glance, uh, it looks like white's uh, uh, pawn structure is much better, and long term it is definitely so. But if black manages to counterattack, then usually uh, he has just sufficient counterplay at very least. Okay. Um, so even this g3 I think is pliable, so this sacrifice, maybe here b3 was too slow, but on the other hand, uh, how to play. So knight f3, all right, rook goes away anyways, uh, white has to play b3, right? So I don't know, to be honest. So maybe bishop b2 is not correct, maybe knight to e4 was better here, creating sort of knight g5. 
followed by something like bishop e3 trying to occupy c5 square. That is also an interesting plan. There can be also uh, the things based on a4, a5 quickly. So there are a lot of different things. Uh, so this sort of positions usually very complicated. All right, so let's keep playing. Let's keep playing. Who's next? Who is next? So, Redix. Let's play Redix. Yep. Let's play Redix because last time uh, it was not very uh, good. I mean, uh, we played just a normal game and then all of a sudden Redix uh, just uh, pressed the resign button and lost the game. That was not very fair, but come on. This happens, right? So, e3 with the idea of d4. Let's play just knight of six. Mick also asks, why not f4 protecting your pawn? f4 is also possible, but, uh, well, there is also the further uh, undermining activities like f6, d6 usually. So when black already has both heavy pieces along the e-file, it's very hard to save the pawn on the board anyways. Yeah. So d5, we have a transposition to call this system if white wants and plays d4. d4. And here I usually like to develop my last squid bishop prior to playing e6. One of possible ways of playing it. Another one is just to play normal c5, knight c6, or e6, b6, bishop, b7, c5 setup. So. These things are all possible. C4, aggressive. Let's protect it with the C6. Knight of D7. At one moment, it even felt like Trompovsky reversed, right? <laughs> with the bishop on G4. Very close to that. But now it's kind of Carl's bad pawn structure with my bishop already developed on g4 and uh, white's bishop being passive on c1. So I think it is a good version for black. That's the point. Rook e1. So let's castle. Queen c2. Usually the rook goes to e8 here. Why not in this particular case? So I actually enjoy my position. It will be not that simple for white to come up with a typical minority attack on the queen side because all the pieces are quite passive here. So b3, as we can see, instead of active b4. But b4 wasn't possible, of course. Right away, it's possible to prepare it somehow, like a3 or rook b1. So what about knight e4 here? Is it a good moment for active operations? So knight e4, knight e4, d takes e4, knight goes to, let's say, d2. Bishop takes e2, rook takes e2. Queen jumps to h4, g3. Not clear. Not clear. Do I have a chance to improve my position even more prior to getting to e4 square? I don't know.
So I can come up with the same maneuver like in the game against Mick. Knight f8, knight g6. Do I achieve anything concrete there? Most likely no. That is a typical dilemma in this position, usually so. To start this active play with a knight e4 or not. Let's try it. That's interesting. And it feels like a correct moment because at the moment I have a better development. So starting active operations should be justified. Well, at the very least, after 94 d4, 92 bishop e2, rook e2, and queen h4, um, I have a very active setup. I have a very good square d5. So it's kind of yeah French, French defense reversed type of position. Let's see. So there was a command knight f8, knight g6 is probably not good because the f4 square is not available for this piece. Yeah, true, but uh, in many cases this knight then jumps to h4 with the attack against g2. So imagine my knight is already on g6 in this position. If black takes, sorry, if white takes on e4, I take on e4 and I goes away from f3 somewhere, I have this resource like knight h4 and then with the attack against g2. That is usually the idea behind knight f8, knight g6 maneuver. Okay, h3. Forcing me to f5, more or less. Bishop h5 was also possible, of course. But it feels like it is a bit more natural position for the bishop. So now, what to do now? How to proceed? Bishop on f5 is hanging, so I guess it's okay just to protect it. A3. Let's protect the knight this way. Now I can exert further pressure on white's position. And I have to be faster because I have only one minute on the clock. All right. Let's take it this way. Very interesting. Yeah, this probably makes my whole idea not very good. So if I take on e5 twice, there is knight e4 trick. Rook takes e4, bishop takes f6. That's the point. Okay. I'm still slightly better, but I have no time. That's a big problem. At least I'm threatening with a checkmate or something. Hmm. 
just going all in. Don't know if I'm right. <clears throat> yeah, I won on time and position also became winning by the end of the game. Very interesting, very interesting encounter. Um, I have a feeling that uh, I started playing very bad somewhere here. Just let's come back. So this great resort of 95 was really cool. So the point behind this with that, if I take twice uh, on e5, then there is knight takes e4. Extremely annoying. Attacking the rook with a bishop b2, and if I take on e4, then there is a bishop f6 move. So the point is that if I take the bishop, there is queen takes e4 um, with the extra exchange for white. What I missed here is that uh, I had a chance just to play queen e8, protecting the rook. And uh, we have very complicated patterns, so with uh, opposite colored bishops. Uh, but it's probably just a simply equal position. So I actually expected knight d2 with queen e7 and with some pressure. So definitely knight e5 was great. Which means that probably bishop h5 wasn't good, wasn't in time. Uh, and instead, uh, it was probably better for me to try something like rook c8 uh, with further bishop to b8 followed by queen d6. Just, uh, yeah, exerting pressure on this h2. And then it would be just uh, logical to exert pressure on f3 or something. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, very nice. Very nice, very interesting thing. Riddix, I was playing two games. What does it mean? Uh, that's interesting. So Riddix was uh, given a simultaneous exhibition, actually. Very good, <laughs> very nice. So you were actually distracted a bit, right? Yeah, for actually uh, this. Uh, you played really cool, really cool. Oh, by the way, my wife, accompanied by my son, came back. So probably I will have to finish the broadcast very soon, but, uh, well, I guess we will still play several games. So let's pick somebody I have I didn't play it before, so this guy. Yeah, no games. Camel Clutcher. Let's do it. E4. C5, knight f3. Sicilian. Sicilian and one of very, very annoying lines to play with white. Let's try the Marozzi bind setup against it. Yeah, my son is crying. You can probably hear this on the background, right? There's the question, another interesting one. What do you recommend for players below 2000 feet a looking to improve? Well, actually everything, but uh, try not to spend all the time on openings. It's better just to read books on uh, general topics and also try to improve uh, within the end game. If you will master end games, you will feel like your general understanding increases. That is what I did many years ago. That was a good 
um, approach, in my opinion. Rook c8. After b3, how how does white react to d5? I have no idea, so probably I missed something already. Kind of yeah, lost concentration. Let's come up with something active. So we have one of typical hedgehog positions. So black's position usually looks very passive, but in fact it is really poisonous. So black usually has this b5 or d5 undermining moves when it has to be extremely careful about all this activity. Knight of 8 followed by knight g6 is also a typical maneuver here. Sprawl in white to make something in the center. There is always a question, is it a good moment to come up with sort of e5, let's say, in this position, but it doesn't feel like a correct idea, just right away at least. So let's start with this move, just improve it a bit more. So as we can see, all my pieces are somehow directed to the king side, but it doesn't mean that I have something concrete. So now let's say f5 deserves serious attention. I guess should be a good idea. I give up e5 square, but I managed to do something really important, I think, to have the knight on f5. It's a just amazing attacking piece. And now Knight to h6 starts looking very tempting at any moment. But first, I want to improve my queen. And of course, knight d5 is a resource. This should be played a bit later. So let's put the queen here. Very interesting position. So 95 now or not? 95 looks very natural, so let's do it. It opens a lot because I think black is forced to take on d5. And then all of a sudden all my pieces start attacking. So of course I will take with the e4 pawn, opening up diagonal b1 h7 for my bishop. And as you can see, bishop on b7 starts feeling very bad. g6. Every time when I see such a move, I start looking for a decisive combination or something. But maybe I just overestimate my position here. So... Ninety six bishop d six doesn't give me anything concrete. Okay, let's just improve the position a bit.
Maybe it is also too much. Okay, so now I think that should be winning. I think G takes F5, this greedy move was just okay. Now I have an advantage. Let's get rid of uh, unnecessary pieces here. Just simplify everything and win the game. will be not simple though. Black still has good chances. Let's try to undermine all this shit. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh my goodness, no, everything's fine. For now, I thought that after rook d2 I lose, but then queen e8 and queen f8 checkmate saves me. Wow. That could have been just very bad. Okay, so... I anyway missed something, right? Yeah, that's bad. Wow, I'm just being smashed here. Feels like that. All of a sudden. Phew, amazing. It's just amazing. Yeah, we'll lose on time, I think. Most likely. No. Well, actually, I was very lucky because um, I think I was very close to lose this all of a sudden. Wow. So the position looked very good during all the game, but then, wow, well, something wrong happened. Let's have a look at that. So, first of all, this moment. Um, yeah, Queen F4 is not correct. I have a feeling that after Queen F4, it's possible just to take on F5. After queen takes f5, creating this thread, it's possible to play f6, creating, sorry, not creating, but connecting the queen to h7. And after queen takes f6, well, queen g7, I think black has great chances, not even to survive it, but to win this gradually. That is just something. Um, so I realized this only after I played queen f4. That was a stupid decision. Um, I didn't see anything here. I mean, maybe I have some tactics based on Knight h6, but well, highly unlikely, highly unlikely. And probably it was a better thing to me to try something like queen h4, but still the same, should be still the same after g takes f5. Absolutely not clear, absolutely unclear. It's very strange. So position looks absolutely winning for white after all this weakening, but uh, well, I can't see it. I can't see the direct way. So queen h3, g takes f5. If uh, 
Yeah, probably the question was about uh, Queen H3 not here, but after all these exchanges, but yeah, White has just some initiative, but not more. It feels like that White has to be much better here. So for example, if I play something like Queen G5, G takes F5, let's say this check, uh, Bishop G7, Queen F5 now, attacking H7, well, Knight G6 is possible. And again, I'm not sure at all what is going on. So here it looks like black is just fine. Yeah, so this position deserves further analysis. It was not that simple uh, as I thought. But of course, after f6 and knight d4, uh, white has a great advantage. So the rest is just a uh, strange play from my side. So uh, here, immediate bishop e4 is, of course, much better than taking on e5. I don't have to take on e5 here. So bishop takes e4, queen takes e4 is absolutely winning position for white. No compensation, nothing. So I don't know why. Why did I take this on e5? I have no idea. Anyways. Uh, very interesting game. Thanks a lot. So, uh, I would play the last game today. So, let's pick somebody. Archon01. Yeah. Engine agrees with Queen F4? Well, maybe. I have no idea how the this engine evaluates the position, <laughs> how this thing makes decisions. G takes F5, Rook E3. Well, it was too deep. Yeah, it feels like White has a compensation even after losing the piece, but I wasn't sure at all about this anyways so it will be the last game today thanks in advance for being with me so if you want to join me during these streams and play against me just uh, do not forget to subscribe to my youtube channel you can find the link just under my name and uh, you can additionally turn on notifications so that every time when I'm online you will get the notification so you will have no chance even to miss the stream when it takes place So the next Banter Blitz show will be this coming Friday on Chess24 to play there uh, you need <clears throat> a premium membership to watch this well you have to be just registered on Chess24 as for tomorrow there will be a next episode of uh, Training Tuesday, a show for those who want to improve in chess. And uh, this one is also a premium show, so even to watch it, you need a premium membership on Chess24. But in general, it's worth doing. You get a lot of benefits. It's not only my opinion, you can ask anybody. So Chronic Student, for example, who's named Sub on chat, also Miktal. They can tell you how is it to be a premium member of Chess24. Okay. Knight h5 now looks very tempting. Want to counterattack.
<clears throat> Steve Martin says, thanks for the stream. You're welcome. You are welcome. I'm happy that you are here. So it feels like it feels like I achieve my sub goal. So to stick to twenty five hundreds, so to be well above this level. So it, at the moment is twenty five sixty. But my main goal was to tell you something new, maybe, about chess in general. So, if you found this stream instructive, and if you became even slightly better in a sense of understanding chess, I'm just happy. That was my main goal. And so my personal goals, I can do it without streams, right? So now it feels like I can take on g2 if I want. Feels like a good idea. But b7 is actually now hanging. So I don't really want to give up the spawn anymore. So let's start with the b5 move. Knight e1, okay, preventing knight takes g2. And now, what to do in this position? b4 looks very tempting now, so let's go. Let's go and attack. To take on c3 first, I think. Prior to going away. Because now the b file is open, right? Right, good. Good achievement. So this file will be used for attack. Yeah, good perspectives, good position. Ugly opponent's knights. Now let's go to the B file. It's getting hot there. Along the B file, I mean. I still have to do something with this annoying queen. Let's start with this move. Because there is no useful work on g6. And now I want to get here on b6 just to approach this queen. Yep. This is done. What is next? Next can be a5, a4, a3. Let's do it. b3 is weak. Let's go there with the knight. Counter-attack in the center, or first get into b3. I think, yeah, I'm not in a rush. Now the rook on b8 is no longer needed. Let's regroup the pieces. Let's regroup the pieces somehow. Let's take this. And now just d5. So white's pieces are misplaced. I have to use it. Have to use it somehow. So it takes. It takes on d4 with the queen. Looks very tempting. All right. All right. 
this knight comes to play. Okay, at the very least, I have a good pawn structure. Pawn on a3 is hanging, so I'll take it with pleasure. Now I have very dangerous passed pawn. In addition to all the advantages of my position. Have to be careful about the pawn's counterplay as well. Um, so one more check. Just to make sure that the G file is closed. And now what? Queen here. Seventeen seconds only, but position is absolutely winning. Takes, takes here, check, one more check, checkmate in two moves maximum, yeah, two moves at max. All right, not a bad game, right? Not a bad game. Uh, well, probably both sides could have played better. Um, so I guess um, it was a mistake to give me a chance to play b5, b4. Uh, in fact, I already had very comfortable position after uh, getting to f4 with the knight. So maybe it was better for uh, white to try this queen takes b7, although it looked um, quite dangerous, right? Still having the king on e1. So I can't probably trap the queen, but uh, I can get to the second rank, which is annoying. After rook b8, let's say, queen takes c7 and rook takes b2. Now I have serious threats connected with knight f4. Uh, but who knows, maybe that was the best chance because here white can castle. Um, probably it was better for me to start with the knight f4, attacking d3. Mm, but here after castling, well, I'm not sure I have uh, everything that I want in this position. So let's say after knight takes g2, knight takes g2, rook f3, c7 is still hanging. So, well, this position is unclear, in my opinion. But okay, anyways, uh, as I said, uh, thanks a lot for being with me uh, this uh, yeah evening. It was a uh, definitely hard day's night. Uh, I was a bit tired, but uh, well, I scored not very bad, right? If compared to previous streams, uh, it was much better today. And uh, as I said, the next stream will be on Friday uh, on Chess24. As for my own streams on Lee Chess, uh, I'm planning to make uh, this um, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, um, just uh, every week from now. So the next uh, Leecha stream is planned for the morning of Saturday. Uh, but if you uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on notifications, well, you will be just notified every time when I'm online. Um, all right, it's a good idea, right? So as uh, for the link, you can find it just uh, under my name. Uh, have a nice evening, have a nice week. See you soon, bye-bye.